Okay, let's talk about your musical life, shall we? Musical life? Yeah. Um, bands that you've been in, apart from the Julia set. Bands that I've been in. Uh, there's a list for you. Uh, very first one, Holiday Camp Band, I was about 16. They were called Sunflower Valley. Uh-huh. It was mainly backing tracks. Mark was the guitarist. Carla was the vocalist and I kind of come up and basically allowed Mark to do a lot more stuff on guitar when he wasn't thinking about what words to sing. I did a lot of that stuff for him so his guitar playing apparently got a lot more fuller and better. So Yeah, there you go. Um, You're an asset to the band. Well, only when I was with them for like, you know, those, those two weeks and and then off onto various little gigs they did outside of, of that place which was Burnham on Sea I believe. Ah Burnham been there. Um over near Western Supermare. Yep. On the banks in the River Seven. Yep. Um what else uh, there was a band in Windsor, a bit of a jazz funk band. Um I can't remember it was either the Spoonful or the Loving Spoonful, but I I think it was a take on the actual proper band. It was called the Spoonful, Loving Spoon, one of the two. Yeah. But they, they, I think it was the Spoonful because the Loving Spoonful is actually a proper big funk band from the seventies. Right. Um, that was interesting. We did gigs in Carl Shelton and something around that. It was annoying because nobody wanted to turn up for a rehearsal because they knew the bits. Yep. But I didn't, so it was like, well, I need to learn the songs along with you guys, the musicians, because we are playing live. Yep. I didn't last very long. Um, various jam nights around the southeast and didn't you didn't you sing in front of a big band once? Ah yes, that was uh, um, that was part of Sunflower Valley. That was when I was playing football when I was like 18, 19. But I was in this place down in Red Hill um, playing football down there. But I was still in contact with them, and they said, "Do you want to do a, a charity gig in Brighton?" Yeah. So of course I said yeah, and I ended up doing Achy Breaky Heart to about a thousand people in this big auditorium. Um, and I think because I was nervous about doing it for the first time in front of many people, Mark, I think did about it must have been maybe a dozen or so rounds of the intro before I started singing because <laughs> it just you know I had to get the nerves up and then trying to get people on stage to do the line dancing because it was a song Make yeah, Break You Up yeah. and I was really nervous but then the first few lines came out of the lyrics and I was happy after that I was like oh, this is fine I can do this it's alright <laughs> I can sing and apparently I can I can stand on the stage and do it at the same time and not be nervous so yeah so okay including all those best gig you've ever done well, don't forget, there's obviously one from Swindon that I oh, told you about. Oh, that's right, yeah. Well, that uh, was called, um, uh, The Unforeseen. Unforeseen, yes. And I've still got the um, the illuminated kind of acrylic perspex light-up plug-in sign that, that he ordered off, off the internet. The Unforeseen. His name was Brendan Hicks, but he went by Brendan Hayes. Um, he had a song called Stepping Out of the Hayes, which he wrote, and he still writes stuff to this day, solo stuff. Are you still in touch? Um, not as much. Cause I don't know what he's doing, but he was sort of working his way from Swindon back over to this way a little bit, but now I think he's moved further out to the countryside somewhere, I think Gloucestershire or somewhere, I don't know. Um, he was quite, shall we, I wouldn't say eccentric, no, that's the wrong word for him, eclectic, definitely. Yeah. Um, but he was from... The West Country, so or, you, you know, <laughs> you make it your own mind. <laughs> um, well, no, every time we, we were on the phone and we, we were ending the conversation, you know, and it was, oh, I'm not exaggerating here, but every time I said, Right, I'll catch you later, Brennan. Yeah, see you later. Right, okay, boy. <laughs> boy, see you later, Mikey. Boy. That was, that was his accent. So he could sing pretty well, but not as good as the people that he got to sing for him. All right, best um, be, best gig then. Is that is, is that it for the bands? Uh, there's probably a lot more resident bands on holiday camps and stuff. Um, oh, you you sung for for Daft and people like that as well. Yeah, cameos and stuff for Daft and Graham couldn't be bothered to. Well, not 
couldn't be bothered. He, he drags he, you up. He just likes to get people involved and stuff. He, he's a good showman in that respect, and yeah. there's a reason why it's now his full time job to book bands and stuff. And he's a basically a promoter. Yeah. Um, but there was there was bits of stuff like that and cameos and doing jam nights and uh, one of my favourite jam nights was the fact that we we did one and this guy turned up and you basically turn up and you get handpicked from the audience and say right you 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 can play bass you can you can sing you can do guitars you can do drums mm. and then you, they leave you to it and he said well what are we going to do and he shout out Songs bands that... and stuff and they'll do you know any U2 do you know any Bon Jovi do you know any Foo Fighters and, all. and when this guy when I said do you know any Bon Jovi and uh, the guys went well uh, uh, yeah we can do that and this guy well what ones do you know so well the short list will be what ones do I not know um, and then he starts playing some of the uh, tracks that they recorded acoustically the band mm-hmm. uh, which were never released commercially um, only part of MTP Unplugged and stuff like that and he started playing that. I said, oh, that's from the Keep the Faith uh, album launch tour because oh yeah 1992 I said, that's the one and that really lit my face up because every time we, we saw him then uh, at other jam nights it was like ah oh, he'd see me I'd see him and it was like bon Jovi. Hey, are you getting up I said yeah we, we'll, we'll do that and we get up and it was just me and him quite nice. a lot of the time we didn't need anything else uh, what were we talking about our best gig oh yeah best gig ever well there's, there's there's a handful to choose from but they're very very different in venue and atmosphere and stuff but yep. definitely the impromptu one that was supposed to be the water rats but our friend was a <laughs> um, booking agent who <laughs> was you know never met the guy but we did three gigs for him never met him once um, um, communication was less than average shall we say yeah which uh, luckily we, we, we did a few well we played the water right phoning around a few few places and we turned up at the 12 bar on Denmark Street so yeah come down we've got we can do a spot for you at the end of the night um, the stage itself was comprised around some rather large piping that was essential to the building itself <laughs> uh, which meant we leant against it most of the time well yeah and we've just we, we, we've, we've just we got five people up on the on that stage amazingly I don't well, know man, we, we've just left at the pub there Mr Mendel he was our guitarist at that point he got us the gig yeah so that was was good I also enjoyed our second stint at the Maidenhead Festival but once yeah. again um, Mother ranked. Nature and and, and uh, uh, circumstance one of, one of my top five favourite Marvel characters Thor decided to drop in and say hello yeah um, and produce a bit of thunder and lightning for us but um, that was that was a lot of fun yeah um, but I think when we back to doing our covers we did it at Noctis that was always a good night because it was always packed yeah and um, you know we were able from quite an early stage because we we we'd actually got round to Completing the arrangements for two of our original songs, which yep. was first time in Wombat. Yeah. Sorry, won't back down. No, Wombat's fine. And um, that was good because we were able to play our own stuff to a packed house, to a big audience. And yeah. I think was the catalyst for us thinking, well, I think that's quite well, like I, the sound that we were doing for them, and you know they want us to play it again. So, to be honest, that was always the plan, though. We were going to be a covers band until we found uh, our chops and everything so we could do our, our originals and that's why we put those two in and that's where we met Mark as well yeah but also to uh, to find out our sort of stage persona yeah sort of you know how are we going to act on stage are we going to yeah. try and connect to the people in front of us are we going to sort of you know do we want to write stuff that's going to be able to help connect us to the audience yep i.e. You know, finding songs that are, are relatable, plus songs that they can join in with. But I think, uh, well, we had that one little place down. What was it? Um, was it down near sort of in Dorset way, wasn't it? Oh was it yeah. Um, um, uh, I forgot what it's called now, but it was named after the guy that um, tragically passed away because of the accident. Yeah. Um, 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 yeah. I completely forgot what, what it was now. I'll I'll find that out and I'll stick it on the video. Um, well, and the ill fated one at Gosfest. My God, that was a. I have never seen rain like it. Why do we attract rain? 
Because we got rained off at that biker one as well, didn't we? We had to go inside. Oh, the biker one, yeah, that was our, our second one, wasn't it? That yeah. was in 2008, actually. Yeah. Because it was... I literally had my first week of my new job, which was at One World Express. One World Express, that's right. You um, just changed. And... Um, yeah, I was supposed to work on it every Saturday, but we had the market get cooked in. Cooked in? Booked in. Cooked in. Um, <laughs> so I took the Saturday off and, and that was that. But yeah, um, questionable attire, I believe, on that particular night. Um, it's back when I had long hair. Well, I think, yes, even I had more hair then, maybe. I don't know, actually. <laughs> Possibly not. I had a hat. <laughs> I, I, I like the hat is still lived. The hat uh, still lives. What the cowboy hat? Yes. Good grief. The hat's still living and breathing. It's still I thought that available had... for um, shows, venues. I thought that hat had bit the dust a long time. Christianings, ago. bar mitzvahs. <laughs> What 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 are we? I don't know if I can answer that in any, <laughs> any great sort of. I I did I wasn't expecting resonance. I think. Um, what sort of band are we? Do you think? Well, I think what we aspire to be, or what I definitely aspire to be, is to be able to have people communicate with us and, 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 and say I love what you did with that song you know there's, there's a lot of relatable stuff in that song and, and I, I feel like I'm part of it and for them to say look you know the whole thing of you know music is for all its intense purposes and for all its, it's ins and outs and it's good stuff and bad stuff about, about music you know it is for what it is it's a world language. You yes. know, the, 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 nobody can sort of, you know, misunderstand the song. Well, mm. I suppose you could, it, it, unless you go to the actual person who wrote it and say, "What's that about?" Um, yeah, but I suppose. All, all in all, you know, sometimes you don't need to know what the words are, what the song's about, if you like the sound of it and, and like the rhythm and like the arrangement and the way it's put together. Okay, you, your favourite song is First Time, I guess. Um, is it? Favourite song to, I, to I perform? I think I between a few different ones. Depends on how I feel. Um, depends on if I'm feeling in a vocally sort of mood. You know, I have these things where I just don't sing at all, at all for the whole day. Yeah. So, um, and it depends as well if I listen to any of the tracks in one day. Sometimes I'll go a few days with it without listening to um, any of the tracks yeah don't do that too often we need the Spotify results <laughs> well no because it, it no it, it recognises um, oh does it oh, well. you know, what sources come from so um, well I, I guess if we're looking at the songs that we've done and we've written yeah I mean first time is, is a great track to to perform live oh it's a brilliant it's a lot song. of energy um, there's a lot of space in and around the song to sort of get involved and interact with each other on stage as well yeah um, but then vocally I think Finding Out is probably one of the better vocal songs we've got because it challenges my vocal cords it enables me to add a bit of power to it yeah whereas a lot of songs there's it's more to do with breathing and timing and getting the sound right rather than injecting a bit of a bit of power vocals in there yeah yeah any songs you hated singing not overly I mean we had I can't say any of them I, I hated well, singing to, to, to be honest you're kind of in charge of how the vocals went anyway yeah, so you know because I, I kind of drove where they went yeah because I'm singing it so you know I, I find a, a, a place where the vocals will fit and also a way of singing it where it's easy for me to sing it I mean I've got to challenge myself so that's where I lay down the, the basic melody yeah with a little bit of room of not so much room underneath, but a bit more room on top. So if, if I wanted to go and and blast out a, a longer note or hold a note somewhere or yeah. take it up an octave to, 
you know, add a bit of layer to the vocal than I can do. So I enjoy, I enjoy doing that. So it's, yeah. it's I want to be able to challenge what I'm doing as, as well as be a bit different and add something different that no one's, well, not going to do anything that no one's ever heard before because, you know, it's like trying to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. You know, the best you can do these days is the whole fusion thing. Well, um, yeah. You but... get it with food and why not get it with, with music? You do. And you get some songs that are, there's... Yeah, some, sometimes it doesn't, really doesn't work though, does it? I mean... Well, I, I think Linkin Park gone a bit of a good market on that in, in introducing a bit of rap with with um, with classic rock and you know sort of hard to to sort of middle middle of the road rock mm. but they injected a lot of power chords a lot of power guitars plus Mike Shinoda comes in and does there's a lot of good sort of rap numbers in it like, in the end is a perfect example of that so yeah you're never gonna reinvent anything that no one's ever heard before but add something different that no one would expect from that song so I mean, this is a good guitar. Oh, I didn't expect that vocal to to, to 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 pop up in that song. It didn't seem like it was gearing towards that, but it did, and it kind of works. Hmm. Okie doke. Well, that's cool. Uh, we'll wrap this bit up, and we'll do some more another time. Yes. Driving so, sessions, we should call it. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>